Hey, what's up? It's Peter with Restricted Arts here, and today I'm doing a quick tutorial pretty much on just how to make a pretty realistic grass scene in Cinema 4D. Um, yeah, so let's just get started. I'm going to open up a normal Cinema 4D file. I'm using Cinema 4D R14, but this should work. I'm not sure how far, how, how far back this works, but this should definitely work with R13 and R12, I am pretty sure. Um, yeah, so real quick, we'll just do our render settings. I'm not going to do anything complex. There's lots of things you can do with render settings to make your images look much better, but all I'm going to do right now is change the width and height um, and add ambient occlusion. Uh, yeah, so start out, we're going to bring in a plane, which is going to be our landscape. And the first thing I like to do whenever I model anything in Cinema 4D is go up to Display and go to Quick Line Shading, or Quick Shading Lines. And it pretty much lets you see your segments, which segments are very important in Cinema 4D when modeling, just because segments are kind of the basis of modeling and what allows you to change an uh, object around pretty much. So this is going to be the landscape that we put our grass on, but we're just going to give ourselves a little more space here and increase all these values by a multiple of 10. So width and height to 4,000, and width segments and height segments to 200 each. All right, and you see we have much more space now. And you could just put your grass right on here, just as a flat surface, and it would look, the grass would look just the same, but just to make this a little more, more realistic, um, we're gonna, I'm just gonna move, play with this plane a bit and kind of give it a little bit more of a hilly look. And there's many ways you can do this, but the way I'm gonna show you is using the magnet tool, which, so you go to plane, hit C to make it editable, and go down here to polygon mode, which pretty much lets you move around these polygons or segments individually, which is why the segment count is so important. Because it lets you be more precise with your uh, movement and transformation of the object. So go up to tools, I believe, or no, it's a mesh and then transform tools and magnet. And you can do this with lots of other tools. There's many tools that do pretty much exac exactly the same thing, but this one's fairly easy. And all I'm going to do is kind of brush and make some hill shapes. You don't have to be very precise with this because the grass we're going to be making is long enough that it will cover up any small imperfections in your in your doing this. And yeah, we're not going to do anything super precise or complex here. And then, so we're going to just have our scene be something like this. Although this hill in the background doesn't look great. Not super realistic. And, uh, yeah, so this is kind of what our scene is going to be set like. Just kind of get this set up right. And then now we're going to put a camera here. And then just so that we don't accidentally move this, a, real, a, tricky, a trick you can do is right-click Cinema 4D DAGs protection and then you see if I select the camera if I I don't I can't accidentally forget to unselect it and move it because you see I'm trying to rotate right now or zoom or move and it won't let me so yeah and um, real quick I'm just gonna drag this down a bit because that doesn't look great all right there we go so if you're doing this by yourself you can be much more precise with how you make these hills and stuff and make it look much more realistic but for now, this is probably fine just for this, the sake of this tutorial. So now we're going to add the actual grass. And the way you do this in Cinema 4D is by going up to Simulate. Make sure you're on the plane. Simulate up here at the top. Hair Objects and Add Hair. You can see it's added the hair here. If we just do a quick render, it shouldn't take long at all. You can see this doesn't look anything like grass. You can see the color doesn't look right, and it's way too spread out. So what we're going to do is whenever you add hair, it automatically it makes the hair as a separate object and it automatically gives you a material to put on there. And hair materials are very different from norm normal materials just because of not only the shape, but you see color is a gradient rather than just a solid shade. And there's many more different settings you can change to make your hair look more realistic like clump how much hair clumps together the density or the how much in terms of grass like 
kink, how much the hair kind of bends, the length and the variation with that, all kinds of stuff that will just make it look much better. And you can play with this by yourself. Most of the settings are fairly self-explanatory, but I have, just to make this a little bit faster and in case you don't feel like playing with it yourself, I have a hair material right here, which I'm going to put in the description below, which you can download. If you don't know how to download and install material, all you do is once you download it, or you can just look it up on YouTube if you can't figure it out, but pretty much all you do is download the file and then just copy the file into your, um, I believe it's the browser's folder in your Cinema 4D Maxon folder. I believe that's where you put it. But if you can't figure it out, just look it up on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I put that hair object on there, on the hair. I put the hair material on the hair object and delete the old one. And you see, we'll do a real quick render again, just so you can see the difference. And you see now this hair is much more, has a lot more variation to it. And the color looks a little bit more realistic, but it's still not great for a few reasons. One, because our lighting isn't anything right now. All of this is the simple light that comes off the camera right now. And uh, second, because there's not enough of it, you can see clearly, to make this look right. So we're, first thing we're going to do is go on the hair object, click on the hair tab right here. And right now the count is at 5,000. We're going to increase that by a multiple of 10 to 500,000. You can leave the segments the same. And guides real quick. We're going to change the roots rather than, you can see the roots here. This is on polygon vertex. You can see that means all the roots are on the corners of these polygons. We're just going to change this to a uh, polygon area. And there's many more settings here you can change to make your hair look even better if you want to play with that. But once again, for the sake of time in this tutorial, I'm just going to leave this the same. I'm not going to render this yet just because it's going to take, it takes about two minutes to render now because of all the extra hairs and the deformers that we put on there. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do to make this now, this looks, this, in the editor, this seems to look okay, but one thing that you can't really tell from looking at it is that, or you can tell, you see all these hairs are standing straight up, and although the material deforms them a bit, it doesn't, for the length of these hairs, since we're making this kind of look like a grassy kind of field, for the, a grassy kind of field, for the length of these hairs, they wouldn't be standing up this straight in real life or there would probably be some sort of wind affecting them so the way we're going to do that make that wind effect is go up to hair and then get once again there's several ways you can do this but you can just the way i'm going to show you is go up to hair on your hair object simulate um hair tools and a brush and you can there's other tools here you can use if you want to do something else but i'm just going to use brush just to keep this simple once again and then we're just going to brush the area with this hair over. And now you don't want to do this too much. You don't want to brush it over too much because if you do, you'll start to see your plane underneath. And uh, obviously you can texture your plane if you want so that you can make it look a little bit like dirt, but that's much harder. That's a lot, you get much more complex with deformers and stuff like that if you start trying to make your plane look like realistic dirt. It's easier just to have it not shown. And yes, yeah, so you don't want to brush this over too much, but we're just kind of giving it a, f a flow kind of look, like the wind's blowing it. Just clicking and dragging a little bit, then letting go and clicking again. Just to make sure I don't pull this over too much. And it's hard to tell because all this hair is bunched up, but if you go up, up top, you can usually see how well spread out most of this is. a little much. Just burst these over a little bit. And um, yeah, so if you want to do, if you're looking for more of shorter grass, what you can do is it will be a little tougher to pull off, but you're going to have to play with the material a bit just to get a different kind of look to get that a little bit more straight with a little bit less variation. And also, you're g probably going to have to increase your count a bit, which will increase your render time, but not by too much, I don't imagine. I'm going to remove this protection tag real quick. Just zoom this in a tiny bit. Put 
like that back on. But yeah, so if you're making shorter hair, pretty much you're going to have to decrease the length and increase the count. By the way, this is you don't want to change this count under guides. You want to change this count under hairs. Um, so you're going to want to decrease the length but also increase the count just to make it a little bit more bunched up so you can't see through the plane. And you probably don't need to brush this over as much as I am now because shorter grass obviously doesn't get affected as much by wind just because there's less surface area. Um, but yeah, now in terms of lighting, some of 4D lighting you can get very complex depending on how good you want your image to be and how realistic. Um, I'm not going to do a tutorial on really complex lighting right now just because it's not my best aspect and also I could s you can spend hours talking just about lighting but a real quick way to do some lighting and not um, not have to do much work at all is just go physical under the floor um, tab just go to physical sky and um, there's different things you can change here with the sky you can change the warmth and intensity anything depending on what look you want you can change the kind of color it gives the scene um, for now, I'm not going to change any of that, but I am going to change the time and location. I don't want this at night as much, but I'm going to keep it kind of one hour before night. So 16 at 1600. And yeah, you don't, um, you can put global illumination depending on what type of lighting you have. It will help, but Th with a physical sky, it doesn't make too much difference, and it will increase your render time a lot to add global illumination. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to pause this real quick and do a real quick render, because this does take about two minutes to render out. But um, yeah. Alright, I'm back, and um, I've just rendered out, or rendered, render previewed the uh, grass, and you can see what it looks like. Um, the area back here on kind of the horizon I think looks really nice. Um, up close it looks a little kind of plasticky and not that great, but um, you can change that a bit with just increase it, making your lighting a little better, incre increasing the uh, quality of your material and stuff. And also a lot of this you can improve in Photoshop and stuff. But uh, yeah, pretty much um, that's the tutorial. Let me know what you thought, if you learned anything, and if you like more of these uh, kind of realistic tutorials. Uh, that's it. Thanks.